we're going to do an example using what's called the expenditures method. And this is actually not going to be our main focus of calculating GDP, but I think it's useful here at the beginning for two reasons. First, you're going to be introduced here to our national income identity. Y equals C plus I plus G plus net exports. And we're going to be using that, returning to this just as a concept, as an idea in future topics. So I'm going to introduce you here to the national income identity. And then the second reason I want to use this expenditures method is to reinforce what gets included in GDP and what's not included in GDP. All right, so let's start with the national income identity. So here, Y is output. That's what we're trying to measure. What is the aggregate level of output or aggregate production in our economy? And in this method, what we're going to do to calculate aggregate output is we're going to think about expenditures because remember, everything that is produced and sold creates income for someone and spending for someone else. So we go through the economy and we add up all of our expenditures in a time period that would be equal to all of our income and that would be a reflection of aggregate production. So here we're going to go through and think about different categories of spending and this is really just totally conceptual, right? We want to think about what are all the different ways that people or groups within our economy are spending money on goods that are being produced in the U.S. So C represents consumer spending. I stands for investment, which is business expenditures. So we have expenditures by consumers, expenditures by businesses. G is government expenditures. Just thinking about all of the different groups that can spend money. The last term is net exports, which is exports minus imports. So who can spend money on stuff we produce? Consumers, businesses, the government, and people in other countries. That's it, that's our national income identity. Now, you'll notice here that we are subtracting off imports. And a lot of people get confused by this. Does that mean that if we import a lot of stuff, our GDP is gonna go down? No, it does not. Why do we need to subtract off imports? It's because the other categories of spending, consumption, investment, and government spending, they could include things that are produced in other countries. If I look at total consumer spending in the United States, some of that spending is gonna be on things that were imported. And we don't want to include that in our GDP calculation because we don't wanna include things that weren't produced in the United States. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up total consumption spending, total investment, total government expenditures, and then we'll just subtract off the part that was spent on imports. It does not mean that importing products is going to reduce our GDP. If anything, what you know about international trade is that specialization in trade will enable us to produce more. It expands our production possibilities. So that's a common misperception here. We do subtract off imports in our national income identity. That does not mean that imports are bad for domestic production. 